YouTubers and welcome back. What do we have today? Oh, she's looking good. Let's talk about this 400 cubic inch small block Chevy. Next week she goes to the machine shop. That's right. So we have big girl right here. Let's compare it to the LT1. We'll do a lot of comparing today to the LT1 and what's different in this uh, guy right here. Pretty big changes. I mainly just want to compare the intake because of course there's a huge drastic difference in the runner lengths. These are way shorter and not nearly as tall, but this one has a mofo of a plenum. So the intake itself on the LT1 is just about you know only that much shorter than the one over there so i still think i'm gonna be good on the hood clearance so that's that's the main concern right now there's nothing wrong with this motor still working good but would you want this motor in your s10 or that one i don't know i think i'm gonna go with this the lt1's not done it's still good i'm not going to spray it till it blows up don't want to do that i kind of want to put that motor in something else that'll be later on that line so let's talk about how big this intake is and what I had to do to match it to these heads. Like I said, this is the first time I had to port, you know, a aftermarket head to match a aftermarket intake. This guy is definitely a big mamma jamma. This is me on my phone recording the shocker finger test for your intake. And I got a little video clip down here that I'll show you guys of how much I had to raise the runner on the head to match. Got a couple of clips here. I did this all off camera. Well, I got, had my cell phone. I was just trying to get done that one day, but I'll share that. The little process that I did with you guys of what I had to do to get this guy to match up right here from the intake to the hits. So you look right here, this will all capture on my phone. This is where I marked on the top of the stock location of the ports on the AFR heads because the intake, this guy was so big that the head was not big enough and you get a whole, especially at the top, you get a lot of turbulence right there where the air would hit and then tumble into the head. So you don't want any of that. You want it to be a smooth transition from the intake into the cylinder head. And since this guy is so big and really easy to see inside your ports, all I did was just take that gasket and then I moved it up until it was not intruding the uh, intake port on the intake so it's flush at the top of the intake so let me take this intake off and i'll show you exactly what i did when you get these i should have took a picture of this but i didn't when you get these they kind of have a little lump i mean they have a little machined area right here where they give you the basic shape of the port but it kind of has a little hump and the, these actually do call for a 1206 intake gasket too but when i put the get when i ported them just to where they had them you know right here on the openings to get rid of that lump so everything's a nice smooth transition coming off the you know all these areas right here in the port when i put the gasket on there it had some overhang on the top and bottom so that's the reason why i ported the gaskets too in the end aha i do have the picture this is the uh, rough cut when i just basically if you look over here on this side let me zoom in you can see right there where they have kind of a CNC cut that gives you basic outline of your intake port that goes up to the intake. And I said that was actually bigger than the 1206 gaskets that it calls for. And they probably did that little ramp right there. So when the air comes off the uh, runners of the intake into the head, that it's kind of flows like that into the head. So you don't have to worry about that. But if you're making a performance motor, you definitely want to make everything and as smooth the transition and you don't want to choke anything down like they had right there. But, you know, it's a very good intake, but you know, most of these intakes, they give you enough material to port like this anyways. And that's what a lot of guys do. So that's definitely what I did. So that was that process. So I'm glad I had that picture right there to show you guys. So right here, I just have just some tape and this is how I moved them up and down. So I just basically just move this guy up like this until it was not seen looking down into the intake or the top of the intake and this gasket were flush. And that is took a Sharpie, 
this has already been ported, so it's already matches, but took a Sharpie, I've done a picture I showed you, and just went around right there, and that's where I knew to port. So when that's done, I just took the head off, and then I ported them. And here you can see on one side of the uh, head was the finished raising of the runner. And then over here you can see where it was marked. And I just poured it down to that line. And when you port that, you don't want to give it a little, like, you know, a little lump like this, you know, off the edge of that into the head. You want to take that runner and you want to move it all the way down to that point. Because then you're actually raising the runner and you're not just port matching. You're actually doing a little bit of porting and not port matching itself. Another thing I had to do, I had to remove material right here where the runners go to the head on the outside. So that way we clear this lip right here. If not, <coughs> excuse me, if not, then this guy wouldn't actually fit down flush. It would kind of nick on the sides right here. So I had to do that on both sides. So when you have a lot of aftermarket stuff like this, you're matching things up, there is always going to be a very time consuming suck process of making sure everything fits correctly. All right, so let's take the phone right here and let's uh, grab a little video so I can show you guys how this side matches up pretty good. So if you look, it's harder to see those ports because you can't really get around, get around the corner. I do have a bore scope, but chances are if this side's okay, that side's gonna be okay. So I mainly just looked at the middle ports right there and just made sure that all those guys looked really good and flush right up into the head. And they do. It doesn't get too much better than that, so I'm pretty happy with that result right there. So yes, I'm pretty excited the way this is all, all turning out. I think this is gonna be a pretty fun street motor that's going to, I still love the LT1, but this is definitely going to destroy the LT1 as far as just torque and horsepower it's gonna make, because everything is bigger. If you wanna know how much bigger some of the things are, let me grab the stock port um, gasket, the intake gasket on the LT1, just so you can see exactly how big the difference is. It's crazy. And here we have it. This is the intake gasket for the Gen 2 LT1. Yes, the LT1 is a small box here. I made a video back in the day just kind of messing with people. Some of y'all got it, some of y'all didn't. I mean, I'm old as crap, guys. I remember when there wasn't any LT1s. A lot of you newer cats probably don't even know a world without the LS. I grew up in a world without the LT1 and in a world without the LS. So when the LT1 came out, we just called them the LT1. And when the first LS came out, we just called them the LS. Small black Chevy, LT1, LS. But now they have so many gins or whatever. If you're an old school guy I'm talking to, you understand it. This is the LT1 intake gasket. And look at that. You talk about a difference. There isn't enough gasket right here to even work on these huge ports of the AFR 210s that I've actually raised even more. So as you can see, this is my main reasoning for going to the, uh, back to the small block Chevy platform, because now I have these heads ported and I have the correct block, aftermarket block to go with this. And of course, if I would have put a turbo on the LT1 over there, it would definitely be faster than this motor in a, and maybe slightly faster on, you know, nitrous than this motor. But this motor right here can also be turboed eventually if I want to. Bigger with a bigger turbo is going to be better. Uh, let's put the intake back on this bad mamma jamma one more time. Oh yeah. Whew, she's looking pretty guys. I am very excited. Like I said, next week, this guy goes to the machine shop and I'm just, this is one of these milestones in my life. When I was younger, I always wanted a 400 cubic inch small block Chevy. It was just what I wanted. And now I can finally have it. I know some of you guys are probably saying I'm wasting my time messing with the Gen 1 stuff, but you know what? The heart wants what the heart wants. And finally, the heart is going to get what it's always wanted. 
Hope you guys like this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more updates when this guy finally goes in in probably a couple of months. Until next time, keep wrenching and peace. Cool.